we continue, we realize again that, that, that God had a plan and Jesus uh, willingly took his part, took his role, was obedient and humble to fulfill and do his part uh, uh, of seeing salvation and being part of the salvation plan for all of humanity. You see, as holy as God is, there's no way he could overlook sin. There's no way he could, he could let it slide. It had to be paid for. It had to be taken care of. And in Jesus, we see the work being finished, being done. And so here's where Paul continues. As he writes in Philippians 2, we read in verse 9, Therefore, since the work has been done, since God, as Jesus, humbled himself, was obedient to the will of the Father, since he died on the cross, therefore, God elevated him, Jesus, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We read that God the Father raised his son. He not only raised his son from the dead, but he raised him and restored all the privileges, all, all the position that, that he humbly laid down. God the Father said, nope, it's all back on you. You're back to your position. You're back uh, to where you rightly should be. And today that God's word says that Jesus is on the right hand of the throne of the Father, that Jesus is Lord, that he is the, the judge. In fact, the Bible says that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. He has been raised to the highest place by his Father. And Jesus has the name above all names, meaning if there's anyone who's ever been history uh, and beyond who deserves praise and deserves worship, it's the person and the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of of God, the name above all names. And so Paul says, listen, one day every knee will bow. Every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. Now, this is very, uh, we need to understand this, that Paul is not saying that everyone will be saved. The Bible never says that everyone will be saved. But what it does say is that all of creation, all of creation will one day bow and acknowledge Jesus, he is Lord. Jesus, he is God. And so we have a, a choice and a reminder here that Paul, but that Paul is, is kind of bringing to the forefront. Listen, have the attitude of Christ, but realize this. He's not only Christ who came as fully God, fully man. He is also Christ who is Lord of all. And we have a chance now to worship him. We have a chance to acknowledge him as Lord now out of love and adoration. We have a chance by faith to accept what he did on the cross, to believe, to turn away from that old way of life, and instead to, to have Jesus be the center of our life, to have Jesus be in charge uh, uh, of where we're going, and that we humbly also follow him, have an extreme love for the Father, have extreme love for those around us. And, and, and by doing so, we will follow Christ as Lord. But if we don't do that in this lifetime, if someone doesn't do that in this world, then Paul says, listen, that one day they will. One day they will be forced to bow and forced to acknowledge, just like a defeated enemy would be forced to realize, I, now I have to surrender, I've been defeated. The same is true for these people. The same is true for, for many people who do not acknowledge Jesus as Lord. And so right now, the choice is kind of ours. How, how amazing would it be to say, listen, I'm going to choose to worship Jesus now before I'm forced to. I'm going to choose to worship and respond to his love that he's been shown me, and I in turn want to love him and follow him. Romans 10 reminds us we need to uh, say it, with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and then believe it in our heart. It changes our life. We acknowledge that now. That allows us to worship the one who is the name above all names, the one who deserves to be worshipped. And it allows us to once again realize, okay, I'm going to get in, in the game ahead of time. I'm going to worship because I get to, 
not because I'm forced to. Because at the end of the day, for the people who are forced to worship Jesus, it's not going to be good for them. Because it'll be too late for their salvation. And it'll be too late for them to receive what Jesus Christ had came to give. Love, reconciliation, a, a, a transformed life of people following God. And so Paul, as he writes this, listen, here's where he concludes and here's what we conclude. Jesus did all this. All this was done, that we read in these six or seven verses, for the glory of God, for the glory of God the Father. 